Warning, the following podcast contains coarse language and spoilers for the film and the title of the podcast. Now playing. Did you know that um, Movie Reviews and 20Qs and even I had a Wikipedia page? Oh, can I look at it? No, because I created them and somebody went along and deleted them. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> Motherfuckers. <laughs> Anywho, what, what are we doing? Oh, we're doing a podcast. Movie Reviews in 20Qs. Hello, goddamn fantastic people, and welcome to the podcast Movie Reviews in 20Qs, the show where we review a movie by asking 20 weird and wonderful questions about it. I am your host, Sam, and as you can tell by my voice, I'm overly fucking excited because I'm here to talk about a Marvel film, here to talk about the brand new Spider-Man No Way Home, and joining me this week, only one person, Kahu, how are you doing? Yeah, just I don't me. care. I'm... Okay, let's move on. I want to start talking about this fucking film, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I think it was an, an omen when I drove over here that there was a container ship in port called STI Magic, and I thought, well, this is going to be a magic episode. Minus the STI. <laughs> I was about to say, what are you suggesting? <laughs> what the fuck are you saying? You can try and give me an STI again. Uh, we've, we've been through this before, Sam. Is this like that time you tried to make me go fishing and you made me catch crabs? Yeah, we, do, we don't talk about that fishing trip anymore. We don't. We don't. Let's move we on don't. from that. Let's move on. Absolutely, let's move on. So anyway, yeah, Spider-Man No Way Home. We're not going to bother with a plot because we're figuring that most of you guys out there have gone and seen this. Uh, well, here, here's a quick one. With Spider-Man's identity now revealed, our friendly neighbourhood web-slinger is unmasked and no longer able to separate his normal life as Peter Parker from the high stakes of being a superhero. When Peter asks for help from Doctor Strange, the stakes become even more dangerous, forcing him to discover what it truly means to be a Spider-Man. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's a pretty non-spoilery plot. Yeah, I mean, all, all I would add would be that... Peter Parker basically doesn't give a shit what the consequences are as long as him and his friends get into MIT. Absolutely. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Who doesn't want to get into the Monaco Institute of Technology? <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's a quality learning establishment. Top quality New Zealand joke there for you guys that no one's going to understand except for our fellow Kiwis. Uh, anyway, it's just dropped. We're recording this on the 17th. It came out yesterday on the 16th. Has a score of 73% on Metacritic. Has a score of 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. Kahu shaking his head, everyone. Wait for it. Has a score of 9.2 out of 10 on IMDb. That's all the all the fanboys that have been in opening night and left their reviews. That's me and my 10,000 IMDb <laughs> accounts. <laughs> you and your you and your click farm in the Philippines. <laughs> how, do you fucking, how do you think we get so many downloads, Kahu? <laughs> We've been rumbled. Um, but let's move into the meat of it. So if you haven't heard this podcast before, what we do is we review a movie by asking 20 questions about it. We start with 10 that can be applied to any film. We then move through three personal questions before finishing on a listener question or a Patreon question. This week, a listener question. That's how we normally do things. But because there's only two of us on this episode, we're actually going to do 13 questions that can be applied to any film. Why don't we start with compliment sandwich or shit sandwich, depending on how we feel about the film. Kahu, mm. lead us off and tread very fucking lightly here, Kahu, because <laughs> you are within swinging range of me. I've been warned. Yeah, you should have seen those eyes I got when I even mentioned the possibility of a shit sandwich to say. You shut the fuck up! <laughs> but no, I'm starting with a good thing, Yay. and that is the reappearance of old characters, especially Matt Murdock and Willem Dafoe. Loved Willem Dafoe since Platoon, and <laughs> I love how you've uh, gone, unless he was lots of fun. I love how you got the return of Matt Murdock, the character name, and then the return of Willem Dafoe, <laughs> as if Willem Dafoe is a character and an actor. <laughs> He's a character actor. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. That's a very good point. That is a very good point. Well played. Okay, we'll say Charlie Cox and Willem Dafoe then. Yay. Matt Murdock and Green Goblin, Norman Osborn. Uh, so that was lots of fun. Bad, and that's kind of the flip side of this, is the spider bro moments in this movie. I was just like, oh, come on, you're pushing this a bit far. The whole, like, let's science the shit out of this, you know. I was just like... Oh, nah, it's a bit too much for me. But a final good thing, I did enjoy the Doctor Strange, Tom Holland, Spider-Man moments. Yeah. Um, I thought that was good. That was quite a good uh, kind of relationship development between those two during the movie. Cool. Interesting. As a score out of 10,000... As a... Out of 10,000... Boxes that disappear everyone back to where they came from. I'm going for 5,800... 
boxes to Five send people. Five thousand eight hundred. Yeah, that's and, and this is kind of the problem I've had with the latest iteration of Marvel Spider Man movies, is that they, I mean, they deliberately strike a different tone to the other Marvel movies, and I don't know, it's it's just it just doesn't doesn't sit there for me uh, with enjoying it. Yeah, I like Tom Holland as Spider Man, but. I don't know. Just these these movies are just a bit too wacky for me. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Please stand by. <laughs> Sam's getting a nervous twitch over there in the corner. Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, it's not a movie I'd watch again. Yeah, I thought like honestly, the first hour and a half was pretty forgettable. Look, listeners, if people have differing views from you about movies, it's fine. They're allowed to have their own opinions. Doesn't mean you have to agree with them. Doesn't mean they're right. Just let them, this is fine. You don't need to call them an arsehole. You don't need to look at them and go, hey, you're a fucking jerk. I, I was <laughs> Shout actually, out to Home Alone for no, never ever being called a jerk. I was pretty close to giving this a shit sandwich, to be honest. But I thought for my... I was pretty own... close to giving that to you for dinner <laughs> tomorrow night. And you might still get it by the way we're going. For the sake of my own uh, health and well-being, I didn't. Fair enough. Now, hey, look, I, I appreciate you as a person. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, professionalism. Come on. Ooh, who are we kidding? We're not film critics. We're just fucking bad. a bunch of jackasses sitting in my garage talking about films. On to me. Uh, first good thing. It's so well paced. I loved it. You say in the first hour and a half for forgettable. I think it set up the second hour and a half really well. I think it followed a good three-act structure. It, you know, it sort of built on the mythos of Spider-Man. It introduced all these former characters in ways that were awesome. Bad thing. Yeah, Okay. I'm not going to lie, there is quite a bit of cringe in this. There's kind of a little bit, like, I, I like the science scene. I thought that was fine, but I didn't like the, like, just going straight into their stories about how, you know, blood died and blood died and all that sort of stuff. I was like, it didn't feel organic to have this conversation with someone you just met and you don't know them, you don't know what they're going through, but it seemed like they already did. And then to follow on from that, to be like, I love you guys. Like, when Garfield said that, I was like, where the fuck has this come from? I feel like this movie's not going to age well. And the final good thing is that it's it's full of fan service, and I love that. You know what I mean? Like, I love the fact that I've been sticking around watching all these movies my entire life to the point that I feel like modern entertainment is literally just my 14-year-old's fantasies. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it just feels like that. It feels like every time I turn the TV on, I'm like, how the fuck is Hawkeye a TV series? <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking blows my mind. So, that being said, the emotional weight and the emotional toll, there was one scene in the middle spoilers again marissa tomei dying aunt may like carking it like i saw it coming like saw it coming miles away at the same time like fuck it hit you in the feels man like they didn't mm. just rush through it like they gave her like it like an actual death you mm. know like somebody would actually die from a stab wound they wouldn't just like you know like oh my god bleh. you know it wasn't yeah. like that yeah, and Tom Holland really sold that scene too. He was outstanding. Tom Holland's great at death scenes. Yeah. You know, when Tony Stark died, when he died in like, Infinity War, shit like that, he's really good at MCU death scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He should be there. He should cameo. Every time anyone <laughs> dies, he should pop up and like, please don't go, Mr. Smith. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to go. M- much better than uh, other characters getting it sa- uh, getting sad. Yeah. Not looking at you, Tobey Maguire in particular. Ooh, let's, let's talk about him soon. <laughs> Uh, my score, it's got flaws. 9,001. 9, Ooh, we, uh, we diverge a lot there, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. So much so. So much so. So much so. <laughs> so, much so. Anywho, I feel like you've already answered this question too. Julio's <laughs> question, Julio of the Contrarians. Great podcast which rages against the Ron Tomatoes machine so they take a film like this. Maybe they should get you on to talk about this shit, jackass. What they'll do is they'll, they'll argue why a film like this is absolutely shit and then do do the real talk at the end. It's an awesome podcast. Go check them out. They're doing a rundown on the Muppets lately, which is awesome because they were over on our show doing the Muppets. But anyway, what's this question, Co? Thank you. Yeah, the question is, and our question too, what's your most controversial opinion about this movie? Toby Maguire sucks in this. Yeah, I, I agree with that. He he's there for the fun of it, but he's not having fun. You know, like he's just he's popped up. He's there because it's like kind of cool, and they probably gave him a couple of million dollars and shit. But his, his heart's not in this. It's sort of like mm, okay. Yeah, I I feel that he's just gone. Yes, Marvel's finally given me the call for an actual Marvel movie, mm. and he's turned up, and 
it's just unfortunate that you kind of can't get away from Spider Man Three. Yeah, <laughs> when it comes to Tobey Maguire, so that kind of sucks. I don't think it was too bad, but yeah, I do agree. He, he dragged it down a bit. Mm. Like Garfield showed up and knew exactly what he was here for, mm. and I feel like almost got a good send off given that he never got his trilogy. Mm. I feel like he he got a, his fair dues, whereas Maguire just popped up. And it's funny because fans are petitioning in the way that the internet does for Tobey Maguire to come back and do an old man Logan, so like a Logan version of Spider-Man, where it's like Spider-Man in his 50s, 60s, and everything's gone shit or whatever. and fucking Yeah. Whatever, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, old, yeah. old Tobey Maguire being yeah. an old Spider-Man. Well, that's the point, doesn't it? He, he does look old. <laughs> he does. <laughs> yes, yeah. correct. Yeah. No de-aging on that face. <laughs> or maybe there was. Maybe that was the best they could do. <laughs> My answer is, and Sam's going to hate this, but... I already do. It's that the emotional moments just don't stick, given the rest of the wackiness that goes on in this movie. And I, and I get it, Aunt May's death was, you know, that, that was well acted by both uh, Marissa Tomei and uh, Tom Holland. But... Yeah, it's just with everything else that went on, it was just like the tone just really jumped around, I felt. And yeah, same with the the whole bit at the end where uh, as they're building up to Tom Holland's Spider-Man's friends forgetting what's gone before. And yeah, I just it just didn't really work for me. Although I did I did appreciate the the scene where uh Andrew Garfield's Spider Man catches MJ mm. and that was like the, the reference back to Gwen Stacy's death and Yep, redemption arc. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was quite good, but yeah, just uh, again a, a lot of it comes down to those spider bro moments and I was just like always thinking of that kind of stupidity with these with these emotional hits that were supposed to happen. I it's, don't know. it's very hard to find a balance in tone, and I mm. think that's one of the the biggest problems. I get what you're saying. Like there is, there is an issue there, especially like he's he's being wacky with serial killers. You know, yeah, like these yeah. guys are effectively some of the worst of the worst. Yeah, there's these villains sort of thing, and he's just like joking around with them. And then like, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. For me, it hurt, obviously, mm. but you know, you you have your opinion. You do you. <laughs> I mean, maybe another I'm part gonna, of I'm it. Do you pretty soon? As well. <laughs> maybe another part of it as well as. The fact there were so many characters in this film, mm. uh, and that I mean, not obviously not like Avengers number of characters, but made it hard for there to be that kind of consistent character arc in the film. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, question number three, Stacey's favorite question: How would you have incorporated Nicholas Cage into this film? Oh, for me, it's got to be J. Jonah Jameson. No, you can't. Oh, that's a controversial opinion, man. You, you can't get Simmons out of there. Oh, Simmons yeah. rocks. I, Simmons does rock. Uh, but I would, yeah, I, I think Nicolas Cage would be similar type of actor for that role, just in the yep. kind of absurd, absurdity of, of what he's saying. He's uh, a menace. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be great. It was funny because I did think of him first for that role, and then I thought, you can't replace Simmons. Mm, like, it's like mm. an untouchable role. He could play the MIT person that's going to let them in to uh, to yeah. MIT. So so rather than the lady inside the car who's like, you know, like up in the air about it, like imagine him just freaking out when fucking Tom Holland shows up. He's like, hello, I talked to you. What do you want, kid? You yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. Just yeah. losing his shit and then getting attacked by Doc Ock. Fuck, that would be amazing. <laughs> Let's have Nicolas Cage do that. Yeah, that would that be amazing. Would be, yeah, that's, that's better, I reckon. Absolutely. Anywho, question four. What do you got? Question four is, what was the most preposterously insane leap of logic in this film? In a film that was full of it. <laughs> there's quite a few. There's quite a few. Uh, Doctor Strange getting beaten by Spider-Man. Mm, yep, that was on the radar. You know, like, sure. Yeah, okay, fine. He's not the Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah, by technicality. Whatever. Fine. He's still the most proficient magic user on the planet, aside from Scarlet Witch. Like, how could he not beat Spider-Man? got all these abilities and powers and shit at your disposal and yet you're getting beaten by a kid who has heightened senses strength and reflexes and a tingly thing you know the heightened sense of high school geometry <laughs> exactly <laughs> with a geometry my way out of a magical kingdom <laughs> yeah yeah because hmm, dr strange doesn't understand geometry absolutely uh i had uh that 
how does Peter remember everything that happens, but his friends don't? And so what does his friends' memories of high school then look like if they don't know Peter? Wait for it. We've got to discuss that later. But yes, it is correct. Yeah. And which is, I mean, it's always an issue with this type of like time travel butterfly effect. So one of my questions was literally going to be, how quickly after this film do you reckon people worked out that he was Spider-Man? Because you're right. Here, here's the problem. Let, let's just start with Flash Thompson. Flash Thompson written a book, a physical being <laughs> yeah. that occupies the universe that details everything about Peter Parker being Spider-Man. Couple that. These kids love Instagram, maybe not Facebook, TikTok, you know, all that sort of shit. You're going to have thousands upon thousands of photos of these motherfuckers together. Yeah. And they're going to, like, Mary Jane's going to be like, who the fuck is this dude that's literally been in every single one of my photos for the last year and a half? Yeah, does, like, does all that disappear as well? And then... No, because they just deleted the memory from people's brains. Uh, yeah. As a, yeah. Yeah. Didn't make sense to me. And, and yeah, it's that whole butterfly effect too, if all of that's changed, but Peter still has memories of that being his life. Like, yeah. how, how, does, how does that side of things work as well? He, he remembers his own experiences with his friends. Yep. But his friends don't remember that. So what do they then remember of that time? Like, it just it doesn't make any sense. Like, surely if everybody had to be wiped, then Peter would be wiped too. Oh, man, remember that day, like, last week when I went bowling with that, with my, hang on. What? <laughs> you know what I mean? You'd be like, you'd have all these events, all these, like, things that you've gone and done with your best friend that you're like, wait a minute. There was no one there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went bowling by myself. I went bowling by myself? <laughs> I went seesawing by myself? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. I, I went to that dinner for two by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I had sex in the school locker room by myself. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, got, I've got some problems here, guys. Yeah. Be yeah. weird. Anywho, on to question five. What was the biggest dick move in this film? Yeah, so it's when... Peter has them all together and they're trying to use science to cure their problems. And you sort of get a bit of a feeling that uh, Willem Dafoe, Green Goblin, is kind of not letting on everything that it seems. And that Electro is, you know, he's kind of openly against what. uh, But Sandman, he's like kind of supportive of it. And... He just sort of immediately flips and turns on Peter when Peter's trying to help him. I don't trust anyone. Yeah, yeah. Huh? It's like, it just comes out of nowhere. It's, yeah. Yeah. He does He does the same when he, like, fights off Electro, you know, when they're in the fields. And that, that's, sorry, that's where the I don't trust anyone comes from. It's just suddenly, like, fucking blasts him. Yeah, the other, this is almost insanely apologetic as well, is, like, Electro is a bad guy. Yeah. And he basically says to him, hey, I'm going to take away your powers. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he like goes along with same with Lizard. Lizard just hangs out in a van. Yeah. These are like people that like are psychopaths. You yeah, know, like yeah. they've got no reason why do they want to go along with the shit. Yeah, it didn't make any sense. I mean, for a while there it did kind of look like they were gonna set it up as the Tom Holland Spider Man and Sandman and the other one. Uh, Doc, Doc, Doc Ock. Doc Ock. Like those three against the other three. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought it was heading in that direction, but it didn't. Full nerdery, I thought we were going to get a Sinister Six movie, which is in the comics there was a Sinister Six, and it's had different iterations, so there's been like the guys in this and Mysterio and a whole bunch of other ones where they've basically they've come together and gone, look, Spider-Man hands our ass to us each time. Why don't we all get together and fucking team up and take him down? Oh, so yeah, like yeah. Vulture's been in it and Scorpion's been in it and Shock and all this other shit. It changes all the time, but. We were close to that. We were close to having five on one. Mm-hmm. So uh, the the one for me is like right at the start of the film, we discovered that Wong's been doing the portals wrong and breaking the seals and like the Sanctum Santorum is just full of snow. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Doctor Strange just has two just random people just like shoveling up the snow. <laughs> You've got magic, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make that shit just disappear. Come on, <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How can you like start magicking portals and like fucking pulling shit up and then you're like, no, nah, I'm just going to make these two dudes just shovel some snow. Is that their training? Is yeah, that their yeah. train? What do they learn from that? What do you possibly learn to make you a better magician from shoveling snow? Or just get a big ass portal and a massive extractor fan and just blow it all somewhere else. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I thought that was pretty dickish. I mean, there's a ton of other things in this film, obviously, that they all do that was all pretty dickish, but yeah. 
That, that was the like under under the radar one for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next question is also a Patreon question. It comes courtesy of our man Jason. Okay, nerdtrovert, you're the man, bro. I love your work. His question, Kahu. Thanks, Jason. And it is, what time was the perfect time for a bathroom break? When they go to Happy's place. That sounds like a euphemism for something. But <laughs> yeah. when they move into Happy's apartment and like he's on the phone to MJ. Well, maybe not that part, but like when they're moving in and all that sort of stuff. There was a part there where um, I've got the like a, a bladder the size of an acorn. So I was like, where do I go? Where do I go? Where do I go? And that was the part where I was like, eh, it's kind of I see where this is going. Kind of upset. They're not getting into MIT. I was like, I could probably dip out now. I could probably dip out now. But held it. Held it. And it was noticeable that there was at least two or three people actually in the cinema who chose to go to the bathroom at that time. They did. <laughs> yeah. They did. They absolutely did. Uh, yeah, I was kind of similar. I had basically any time in the first hour and a half. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you could have missed Matt Murdock. I could have, but then all he did was catch a brick. It was like, yeah. I was expecting him to kind of come into it a bit more. I mean, I'm I'm hopeful that it's a sign of things to come for him to be in this phase of the Marvel Universe a I, bit more. I kind of wish you had gone to the toilet just before the Matt Murdock scene, given that I was in the chair beside you and I let out an audible... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. Yes! <laughs> Not even though, just... <laughs> <laughs> to be fair to you, you weren't the only one. No, I wasn't. I, I was hoping you got masked by the thousands of other people in the crowd yeah, yeah. that did the same thing. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there going... <laughs> 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 Fucking nerds! <laughs> I was so good. Oh, I love Charlie Cox. I love Daredevil. Oh, some of my favorite TV. Go listen to Rabbit Ears podcast where I talk about Daredevil. Yes. There we go. A little plug. There we nice. go. A little plug for Ashley's nice. show. Rabbit Ears podcast. But anywho, uh, question number seven. Which character from this film is probably in jail now? I think it's got to be Electro. I just, I just don't <laughs> feel as if he's going to let all this go immediately. Like I could, I could kind of see the others, but yeah, Electro. I don't think he's just going to go. Oh, stink! Lost my powers. I'll move on. I was struggling to remember how he died in Amazing Spider-Man Two because I was struggling to remember ever seeing that film to begin with because it was so shit. Yeah, and like it was good that he like said, "Oh, you know, I was becoming part of this electrical thing," and then I suddenly didn't. Like I can't remember what he did. I feel like Garfield pulled down some electrical towers and short circuited him or some shit like that. So he's now gone back to that universe and he's like depowered and stuff. But he was a weirdo. He was a straight up creep weirdo. But in this, he's got a hairline back and he's buff and he's Jamie Foxx. <laughs> yeah, he's like yeah. the Jamie Foxx that we, you know, like most people know as yeah. opposed to the quivering nerd. But yeah, I reckon him. Yeah, he, he's, he's up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a toss up for me between Sandman, who was a career criminal. Flint Marco is a career criminal, just wanted to see his daughter. But still at the same time, he was like out on a warrant. In, in Spider-Man 3, so he's like probably gone back. He's like, fuck, I'm still on a warrant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I don't have sand powers anymore. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Toss up between him and Flash Thompson. I think Flash Thompson is not long for this. <laughs> not yeah. long for the uh, walking around in normal life world, pretty much. Like, I feel like he's just going to do something dickish. Yeah, some like white collar crime, eh? Like corporate fraud or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean hearing two of my mates talk about their parents' companies and giving me stock tips as insider trading? What do you yeah. fucking mean this? Yeah. What do you fucking mean what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gains are gains. Exactly. <laughs> He's that sort of guy. Anywho, that moves us over to question number eight. Also a Patreon question that comes courtesy of our man, Dave Baker. Dave has his own Patreon as well at patreon.com forward slash your favorite. That's the American version of the spelling of your favorite, so know you and that. But anyway, Dave posts a ton of awesome content on his Patreon. There's a link down in the show notes, uh, video essays, essays on Medium, YouTube recommendations, all that sort of good stuff. His question this week was what, Kahu? Thanks, Dave. And the question is, what two characters would you want with you at a house party? Possibly Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. He seems like the more fun doesn't you know like he's not completely jaded by life like fucking Maguire is but he's not sort of young and brash like the other one I think he's he's the fun Peter Parker do you reckon I reckon he's like shut up he's still like <laughs> pretty depressed oh he is but like he's not as bad as Tobey Maguire 
Maguire's like brave facing it. You can sense there's some shit under there, but it's probably like a, you know, I don't actually want to be here filming this film type stuff. But Yeah, Maguire's Peter Parker seems like he, he sits in a rocking chair on his porch, eh, and just sips bourbon yep. every afternoon yep. and morning. The other one. Here comes the much you answer, much you answer. Aunt May, Aunt May, absolutely Aunt May. Got to be Aunt May for the second one. She's fun. She's out there. She knows how to have a good time. She's single. <laughs> she's also dead. Uh, <laughs> um, we can have Bernie's her. She'll be <laughs> having a great time. Uh, yeah, I thought that was going to be the Sam answer, actually. <laughs> uh, but incidentally, I also had Aunt May. I, for, you the, for the same reasons. She's, you know, she's one of what, the most... What, she's dead? Is no, that she's, why the, that's why you want her there? She's one of the most fun people in this movie. So She's yeah. the only fun person yeah. in this movie. Uh, and the other one I had was actually Doctor Strange. He can do his cool little magic circle shit. Party attendees nah. would love that. He fucks up spells all the time, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. What about that, though? Like, surely if you're this master sorcerer and, you know... You probably have to cast spells on the street occasionally where there's people around. Correct. Like, how can you not isolate a spell so that idiot boy over there <laughs> can't just talk his way through it and ruin the whole thing? Like, that was the whole basis of this movie. How do you not leave idiot boy upstairs and just go do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or just like, as soon as he starts talking, I'm closing the spell. Get out of here and I'll start it again. Yeah. Like, idiot yeah. boy was a pretty big idiot boy throughout this film, really, wasn't he? <laughs> he's he's a walking, swinging disaster. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good way to describe him. <laughs> Still over 9,000. Fuck you, I'm not breaking. <laughs> Still not breaking. But that moves me over to question number nine. What would the porn parody name for this film be? It's Spider Bros Before Hose. <laughs> <laughs> oh! I'm glad this question isn't made a try for return because that's a fucking great answer. I, yeah, when I saw when I saw this question come up, I was like, "Oh, we haven't had this in a while." My my one was Splusher Man, no way to bone. <laughs> a lot more creative than mine, I feel, but I think they're both good answers. They're both as creepy as each other's. Let's move on to question number ten. Also, a Patreon question comes courtesy of our man Nicholas Haskins. Okay, Nicholas Kitchen. He's the man. Go check him out. Cooking podcast. Stacey's going to be on soon. You guys know the drill. <laughs> Nick, I'm saying this to you now, man. We've got a break from here until the 12th of January. So Stacey is ready, willing, and available. Oh my God, that sounds creepy. <laughs> she is ready, willing, and available for you to be on your podcast. So we'll just keep petitioning. We'll just keep petitioning. Come back in 2027, listeners. She might actually be on an episode by then. <laughs> Anywho, his question. What is it, Kahu? Yeah, thanks, Nicholas. How you doing? What type of Get a meal? <laughs> what type of meal is this movie? It's a burrito. It's a burrito. It's stuff full of good shit. It's the type of stuff that, like, you know, yeah, it's not too nutritious. I don't give a fuck. I love burritos. Get a burrito down me. Shove one down my throat. They're amazing. Burritos are good. I have to agree with you there. Mm. Um, I'm going with trifle, and and I just thought, is that just a New Zealand thing, or is that a worldwide thing? I don't know. That's a trifling matter. It is. In more ways than one. It's a British thing. I think it's a yeah. UK Commonwealth country type. Yeah, okay. Get well, if, if people don't know, a trifle is a dessert basically made up of fruit, custard, and cake. And so we've got three Spider-Men in this movie. <laughs> the fruit is Maguire, the custard is Garfield, and the cake is Holland. There you go. What, what about, Okay, fine. If we're going with this, what about a Neapolitan ice cream? Ooh. Vanilla's got to be Holland. No, 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 Maguire. Yeah, vanilla's got to be Maguire. Chocolate's Garfield and <laughs> strawberry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he says, I don't know what I mean by any of this. <laughs> yeah. Or, Holland's definitely a strawberry, eh? He's definitely yeah, a strawberry. Yeah, he definitely is. Yeah. Uh, Garfield's definitely chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I would go with Maguire as, as the bland one. Yeah. Toby Maguire, possibly the most whitest man alive. That's basically what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, maybe Tom Holland gives him a run for his money there. Oh, they are. They're, 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 yeah, it is, it is a strawberry vanilla mix. I think there's a bit of interbreeding between those colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of a bit of melting and molding between the two. Yeah. <laughs> Agree. Okay. Okay. Question number 11. What deep philosophical debate arose in you while you're watching this film? Hmm, and this goes back to our good friend Toby Maguire again, and mine is, <laughs> does any actor ever say no to appearing in a Marvel film? Like, I mean, The Eternals seemed like it kind of got rid of 
of the last batch of actors that hadn't been in Marvel films yet. Pretty much. <laughs> Did they just find dirt on everybody? I mean... <laughs> what? Yes. Like, I Disney mean, fucking knows, bro. <laughs> yeah. Disney knows. Yeah. I mean, obviously they get offered lots of money, but, you know, a lot, a lot of actors probably don't really give a shit at times and it's just like, nah, I'd rather sit at home in my awesome mansion and do nothing all day. Um, I'd just like to take this time to do a full disclaimer that Disney doesn't know. I, I, I haven't been paid to say this. I don't currently have a mouse inside my house with a gun pointed at my head. None of that's true. No, 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 nothing. Disney doesn't know. Disney doesn't know your search history. Disney doesn't know who you've slept with and had an affair with. Disney doesn't know how to get you into a film. See me in Captain America 7. Here I come. Yeah, yeah that, that's Sam's excuse for not being invited to a Marvel film yet. Mm, shut up. <laughs> It is now one of those cases where it's like name 10 well-known celebrated actors or actresses that haven't been in a Marvel film. I think, like, I think when Kevin Bacon is in a Marvel film, we'll be at peak Marvel. Yeah. Okay. Kevin Bacon, I wouldn't class him as a celebrated at all. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> he, he you know, it's the, the thing about, you know, that whole seven degrees of Kevin Bacon thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. No, I get that. Yeah. I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, Matt Damon has, but Ben Affleck hasn't. So that's maybe mm. one. And then like Julianne Moore, but she's probably not too far away. Yeah. But then Ben Affleck's been in the DC universe. So, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, he's already dabbled in. Oh, no, fuck, he played Daredevil. Technically not in the MCU, but he has oh, played yes, a, of course he did. Has played a Marvel hero, so he's probably done his stint. Yeah. Holy shit. I'm trying to think. Al Pacino? Has Al Pacino been in a Marvel film? Bruce Willis? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on. Yeah, yeah. Let's move on before Bruce start... Willis doesn't need to be in any films anymore. Bruce, let's just use the enthusiasm that Bruce Willis has for his films and just kill this conversation <laughs> yeah. right now and move over to my deep philosophical debate, which was how fucking cool would it be if no one knew who you were? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, think about it. Like, if you woke up tomorrow and literally no one knew who you were, the type of shit that you could get away with. Or like the history and everything, you know, like you could move to the other side of the fucking planet and start a whole new life. Yeah, you you would have no obligations to anything. Or you could move to a town half an hour away. Or <laughs> you could stay in the town you live in. Yeah. And start, like yeah. create this whole fucking new life for yourself. So you're saying you like this place, but not the people in it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say, Kahu. I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I'm just trying to say, imagine if I woke up tomorrow and my wife and daughter didn't recognize me and I could just jump in a car and drive away. Imagine that. Stacey would kick your ass if she woke up tomorrow and didn't know who you were. Yes, yeah, she'd kick the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> what would Sarah do? Imagine if Sarah woke up tomorrow. Kahu's wife, by the way, everyone. What would she do if she woke up tomorrow? Uh, she would probably kick my ass even worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'd have like five seconds of bliss where he's like, no one knows who I am. And then I got yeah, yeah. beaten to death by a handbag. Yeah, it would be either who's this hot guy or who's this strange guy. <laughs> Definitely going with strange guy. Strange guy. Definitely strange guy. <laughs> Dr. Strange guy. Anywho, uh, question number 12. Kahu, what is it? Yes, how long would you survive in this movie's world? Like, I'm such a massive Marvel fanboy that if I lived in the same world as Marvel characters, I think I would be one of those idiots outside a massive disaster cheering it on and yelling and screaming, and yay! Like we did Ghostbusters. We did Ghostbusters recently, and there was a scene at the end of the film when the Ghostbusters show up and there's a massive crowd gathered outside to see their heroes, to see them go fight a ghost that's, like, destroying the top of a building. That would be me. That would be me. So... Zero minutes, zero seconds, whatever. Transport me into this universe. Holy shit, I'm going to go see four fuck-ups. I'm dead. Nah, and I'm dead. <laughs> I, I actually went the other direction. I think that apart from that bridge scene, there's not that much involvement of the general public in this film. Like the, the, yep. the climatic fight is on the Statue of Liberty. So nobody around apart from the, the main characters in the film. When he first fights Electro, he's out in the middle of the forest somewhere. Mm-hmm. Good There's point. the bit when they're escaping the the building where Happy's apartment is. Yep. So there's that. But yeah, I didn't think so as much. Although, just a, a side note, it's kind of art answered the question for me how Spider-Man swings around when he's not in the city. He swings on yeah, the power lines. Power lines, yeah. yeah. So as long but as doesn't he... electrocute himself. <laughs> yes, just leap yes, of logic yeah, right there. Yeah. As, long as, it, as long as there's a, a power grid to swing on, Spider-Man can go anywhere. Absolutely. 
Also speaking of which, dick moves. Putting a Captain America shield on the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. What the fuck are you guys doing, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Statue of Liberty being a woman for a start, and yeah. Captain America in the Marvel series is a male. Yes. Odd. That, that's why I asked you before, is there any like symbolism with, with the shield falling off the statue and the statue staying as it was? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Maybe Lady Liberty was what the fuck are you guys doing, man? Yeah. yeah. Get the, the shit fucking off me. But like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Hey, we're going to take a well-renowned and like beloved landmark and just replace it with the shit. You know, like <laughs> yeah. tacky shit. Yeah. Someone was a hero of their time, like fucking 100 years from now. We're, it's fucking heroes coming and going every fucking second of the yeah. day. Federal budget cuts just can't build a big new statue somewhere else. It's fucking weird, right? Cannibalize an existing one. But, counterpoint... America. <laughs> yeah, yeah. America. America. Family. <laughs> anyway, final question that can be applied to any film comes courtesy of our amazing friend Emily Higgins of the Tasteless Podcast. Tasteless Podcast compares two films. One that is, uh, she thinks gets way too much love, is like Oscar nominated, talked about often. She compares that to a film of a kind of similar theme. That basically doesn't get the love it deserves, and she sort of argues why the other film is worth your time. And quite often she's wrong, but, uh, you know, we still love her anyway. (laughs) I'm just going to drop a little Easter egg. She might actually have a very special guest appearance by somebody soon. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? No, 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 no. no. (laughs) May even be a hostile takeover. We don't know. We will see. Ooh. Who knows? Who fucking knows? Who knows? It seems like you know. I I, I do know, <laughs> but I'm not I'm not saying shit. <laughs> Obviously too much. Anyway, her question, what movie would you peel of this as a double feature? Inception. Why? Because it's got bending cities, cities and nice worlds within nice. worlds and shit. How surprising. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, T, but yeah, I didn't think too much about that answer. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> I absolutely can tell. The one I'm going to go for is uh, Zendaya is actually an incredibly talented actress. She doesn't get to flaunt her acting muscles too much in this, but in the film Malcolm and Marie, she does. I spoke about it the other week on Dune. She's awesome, man. She's a fucking talented actress. My God, does she bring in a Malcolm and Marie. Hmm. I'll have to watch that one. The problem is, like, as a double feature... Malcolm Marie is basically a two character, like hour and a half long film that's basically set in one location where there's not much that really happens, but it's all about dialogue heavy type things. So it's like, if you watch this and came out like, yeah, and then chuck that on, you'd be like, what the fuck? (laughs) What the fuck am I watching? (laughs) Why did Sam recommend this? I'm just recommending it because I think it's an awesome film and I think people should go see it. It's really good. Nice. I thought a lot of people don't agree with me. Anyway, enough of that. Let's move me over to my personal questions. The first of which was, how quickly after this movie do you reckon people worked out that he was Spider-Man? We've already discussed it. Yeah, Probably yeah. within fucking a minute. Yeah, he's a disaster. Yep. Next question. Does MJ deserve better? Because they joke about this. They're like, there's no way that that girl is his girlfriend. What do you reckon? Oh, of course she does. I mean, yep. she's been lied to. Uh, Peter died previously. Correct. She's just had her mind wiped. Like, yeah, of course she does. I actually thought at the end there, if they were going to take the angle of her and Ned being together. <laughs> that would have been weird. It would have yeah. It would have been weird. It hinted at it almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it did. Yeah, she just doesn't need this shit. <laughs> like, Jackass shows up out of the blue and like just doesn't say anything to her. Yeah. I was like, you've made a promise to her but he keeps doing this he keeps fucking her over and yeah. like she's a from the previous two films she was this quite a strong willed fiercely mm. independent like had her own ideas type girl and then just like oh I was furious I was like she fucking totally deserves better than this fucking jackhole Mm-mm. and in that final scene as well like there's she gives him the knowing look as if they know each other as well which is yeah. kind of this thing yeah. again of oh do they totally lose their memories or like is there some kind of I don't know, <laughs> muscle memory or, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It was a shame. She deserves better. Absolutely agree. And final question, let's get a little bit more serious about this. Which iteration of the Spider-Man, so out of Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland, has definitely used his webbing for a sexual-related purpose? Andrew Garfield. <laughs> oh, no, not Garf! <laughs> He's like... 
He's real kind of morose and cynical and cut up after the death of Gwen Stacy. I bet he's scraped the bottom of a lot of barrels. That Garfield definitely hates Mondays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. He hates every day of the week. I mean, <laughs> the fact that he comes through the portal after just kind of hanging out the back of some dark alley somewhere. Yeah. Like, hmm. He could have could have quite easily been in whatever apartment he lives in. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, he just like creeps around the neighborhood, a- neighborhood alleys at night. Knows a bit too much than he should do at that point in time. Yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, can you do some tricks for you? Yep, sure. Here you go. Oh, you can I do? Well, I don't know if I... Oh, really? Oh... He, yeah, he he just wanted a friend. I think yeah, he just wanted yeah. a friend. And he and the way he talks is like in that joking, not joking, or am I type manner, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think maybe that was the thing. Like, I think he wanted to be his friend because, you know, when Ned starts talking to Toby Maguire and says, oh, you know, did you have a best friend or like a man in the chair? He's like, yeah, I did. He ended up like betraying me. I had to kill him sort of thing or whatever, or you know, yeah. dying sort of thing in my arms. I was like, and then you just, Garfield just gave this look of like, oh, I never had a best friend. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. It's like, holy shit, this is sad. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, on to Kahu. Yeah, so obviously lots of returning actors in this film, but which actor has fallen the farthest since their Spider-Man appearance? So their original Spider-Man appearance. I mean, we've shat on Tobey Maguire too much this episode, so... Thomas Hayden Church? Where the fuck is it? What's happened to him? Mm. You know, him and Tommy Maguire, I can't name a single property or film or anything. And like, I know for you, that's probably normal. Whereas for me, massive cinephile, yeah. it's like, it's like when I think about it, my like Afro Molina, okay, is a promising young woman. You know what I mean? I can at least like recall one or two films or something that these guys have done. Reese fans another one. I'm like, I can't remember the last time I saw him in anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can't remember... Willem Dafoe in a lot recently, but he's Lighthouse, been in, saw the Lighthouse. He's, he's really been in that. so many good films. You just like, you know, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I also had Thomas Hayden Church because I I watched him in Sideways, which was probably like two thousand and four. Yeah, a long time ago, and thought, man, this guy's like amazing actor. And and you see where um Paul Giamatti has kind of gone yeah. to since then as well. And um and Sandra O oh was in that as well. Yes. Um Virginia Madsen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but Thomas Hayden Church just nowhere. Like Yeah. Oh. It's not even like the Jamie Foxx situation who's been a good actor and then released quite a lot of pretty average films. <laughs> um yeah, good Thomas point. Hayden Church just hasn't been in much at all, like the last fifteen years. Yeah. Yeah. Real odd. Who else did we have? Oh, that giant tree. What else has that been in? You know the giant tree that got transported into the... Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Haven't seen him do Jack yeah, yeah. shit. Last seen as an ent in Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Yeah, exactly! <laughs> he was an ent in Lord of the Rings and now he's just, just like a giant tree. He doesn't even have lines of dialogue. <laughs> he's just a giant tree inside, what a, inside a cage. <laughs> so yeah, last question from you. Yep, my last question is, how will Bostonians accept a superhero from New York? Famously, Bostonians love New Yorks. <laughs> New Yorkans? Yankees? New Yorkers. New Yorkans. New Yorkans? So much so, they know what they're called. New Yorklanders. <laughs> nude Aucklanders? <laughs> nude, or, nude Aucklanders? Yeah, <laughs> there we go. We're going to have Nude Aucklanders. They do. They love New Yorkers. It's like, it's their thing. You know what I mean? It's like they love the Yankees. Like The Bos- Bostonians love the Yankees. Yeah, it's like but, their favorite baseball team. Yeah, it's like... If the if the Red Sox aren't going to win, they're just really happy that the Yankees win. Absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> they must love the Yankees. Not to mention they're going to love a young little British kid who's like trying his best at a New York accent, but <laughs> kind of just doing a nondescript, could be from anywhere accent. Yeah, well, then he can pick up a Boston, Bostonian accent pretty quickly, can't he? Boston. Yeah. From Boston. I think they're going to be happy to have a superhero off the top of my head i can't think of any superheroes that were from boston and were based in boston i can't i can't think of any not so many skyscrapers in boston though so how's, no there's how's it gonna not go? there's not <laughs> having been to boston there's literally not much does he will he get more tired in a small city because obviously if you've got big more... skyscrapers you can get a much better web swing on and go further on the one swing, yeah. As opposed to lots of small buildings where the the swing arc isn't quite so fast, so you have to 
shoot your web a lot more? I don't know. Do you do you get more tired <laughs> shooting one giant web than you do from shooting a whole bunch of little webs? What, what do you reckon, Kahu? Mm. Yeah, I think I Kahu's think frequent frequency frequency, frequency you get more tired. Webs for <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's move on. You're gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, obviously. <laughs> And that moves us down to our final question. I mean, we can base it on this film, but let's think sort of historically. Which actor smashed the role of Spider-Man the best? So which was the actor that played Spider-Man the best? Out of these three? Yeah, out of these three, or, you know, Shemek Moore out of Into the Spider-Verse. Like, like for you, who's, who's the go-to? Like, when you think of Spider-Man, who do you, who's the actor that comes to mind? Well, well, for me, and I'll give full disclosure here, I haven't actually seen the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movie, so, so he's out for me. And Tobey Maguire in, in his uh, trilogy, I thought was meh at best. What? So I'm going Tom Holland, and mainly because, as we mentioned earlier, I think he just really nails the emotional moments in this film. He won the vote. He got 35% of the vote. Tobey Maguire got 30%. Garfield got 24%. And Shamik Moore got 11%. Actually pretty close between the top three. It's a shame because I think a lot of people would vote for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's probably one of the top films. But it's like, you feel like maybe as a voice actor, you're at a disadvantage. Yeah, you know? I guess it's, so. Yeah, yeah. Not being live action. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, for me at this point, Tom Holland is Spider-Man. Like yeah. he's... That sort of nervous, jittery teenager who becomes a bit of a smart-ass type guy when he's a superhero, which is what you want. Like, Garfield was really good at that as well, though. Yeah. Tobey Maguire was a bit too naive and not really the quippy, whippy, whippy sort of dude. And I think at the time as well, Andrew Garfield just seemed a lot older and mature than perhaps Tom Holland does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is, is that maybe why Andrew Garfield is so cynical in this movie? Because he's like, oh, shit, I could have been the Avengers Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If only my movies were good. I could be this kid. I could be, like, getting 50 million a film or whatever. <laughs> Poor Garfield. Yeah, so that was the votes. Uh, a couple of shout-outs here for a couple of replies. I good mate Chrissy and he said, what? No Shinji Toto or Christopher D. Barnes? who were also voices of Spider-Man. Okay. Dave from Super Movie Bros said, I think Garfield is the best Spider-Man, Holland is the best Peter, and Miles Morales blows them all away. That's the right answer, Dave. That is the right answer. Brad from the Cinema Guys said, Who's the Spider-Man everyone is talking about? Should I know him? (laughs) And finally, our good mate Steve from the Everything I Learned from Movies podcast, another podcast you guys should be all checking out, said, you forgot the obvious correct answer and just put a gif of Spider-Man Noir. But I left them out because Nicolas Cage is Spider-Man Noir. That's not a performance. That's an existential experience. Like, that's <laughs> transcends yeah. time I mean, and reality. It's not a, it's not a like, performance. It's a... I mean, it's like our MV- I don't know. MVP question, you know? He's the easy answer. Absolutely. you just got to skip past it. you got to... Like, try and, like, give somebody else. Like, if I, if I had them in the vote, I reckon it would have been a fucking landslide. It would have been 100%, you know, vote for one person and three <laughs> other people wondering what the fuck was happening. So. <laughs> so, yeah, anywho, that takes us down to the end. Thank you, everybody, for listening. This is our last episode of the year. We're going to be taking a break over the rest of December and January. We'll be back probably the first week of February, maybe the last week of January, to drop some more episodes on you. Probably looking at Ghostbusters Afterlife, maybe The Matrix Resurrections. Anyway, thank you to Kahu. Thank you for joining me. What a year it's been. It has been. A, family. A family year. There's been a whole lot of family in, in this year of podcasts. Um, yeah, I, th- I think I'm getting up to pretty close to maybe 50 appearances now. It's got to be more than that. Yeah, it's I gotta don't know. got to be more than that. I'll have to have a look back through some time and, and see. I think I've been on at least 100 by now. <laughs> the shit's breaking me man I need a fucking <laughs> need a break anywho if you want to get a hold of us you can find us on Twitter at Movie Reviews In or you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Movie Reviews In 20 Qs alternatively just pop us over an email at uh, mritqs at gmail.com anywho yeah that's thanks for me see you later don't listen to Kahu he has no idea what he's talking about <laughs> Do
Hey everyone, no offcuts this week, but a massive, massive shout out to the podcast Verbal Diorama. I'll have a link down in the show notes. M very kindly had me over there to do Thor Ragnarok. Had an absolute blast. M is an amazing person. Was so lucky to be on a podcast with her. And uh, yeah, just an awesome show all around. So by all means, go over there and check that out. It's either out now or out soon. Go and subscribe and you'll hear me sing some praises about Thor Ragnarok. Goodbye.